Hello everybody and welcome to the Play Claw 5 review. This is Vicious XUSMC and today I'm going to be giving you guys a hands-on detailed analysis of Play Claw 5. If you haven't heard of it before and you found this review by searching other relevant terms, you might have found it because you're looking for fraps, uh, you could find it looking for X-Fire. There's going to be a lot of screen capture and video game capture programs out there. And I have done a methodical testing of all the major programs over the years because I do a lot of videos on YouTube and I'm also an editor and reviewer for some major video game sites. And all of those have been put down and PlayClaw 5 came out on top as the victor for me. And at this time and definitely in the past, Fraps was the majority winner because it was the most famous and most popular and it definitely had the best support. So if a new game with a different kind of engine and hook came out, Fraps was the one that would have support for it first. But so far, support for PlayClaw has been very, very good. And it went from PlayClaw version 3, and now it's all the way up to PlayClaw version 5, which introduces a lot of new features. So I want to go ahead and cover those today. Let's go ahead and get started with reviewing it. The first thing that's very new is actually what we're using right now. This is a desktop capture mode. I'm in my desktop, and I've enabled it, and I have my little control panel up here. And it's allowing me to use this program not just as a game capture software, but also as a screen capture software. So I'm going to do the first part of the view here on my desktop, talking about the interfaces and the options that this offers to you. And then we'll do the second part of the view inside of a video game, where I can talk more about the overlays and the features that you have available inside of your games. So let's talk about the tab one by one. The user interface looks like Metro UI from Windows 8. It was a design feature that the creator implemented and I'm not a huge fan of Windows 8. However, the interface, while it looks very Windows 80, is very effective. It's very easy to click on everything, and it's just super easy to navigate. So you can go through these and set your things up just like you would like in no time at all. So I'm actually appreciative of the interface that they have here. The encoder section is going to be what determines what kind of codec that you're going to be using as you're compressing and recording your video. This is very, very important when it comes to screen capture programs because they either use their own proprietary codecs, which might cause compatibility issues when you try to import those videos into your video editor, or they use basic ones. And the basic ones sometimes might not offer as much advanced features for you, such as really great compression or really great um, lossless type visual. This one uses primarily Motion JPEG, which is very old, but actually very good. It works just like if you took a screenshot or saved an image as a JPEG, you have the option to choose the quality of your JPEG image. 100% being basically lossless, and then you can go down to you know, lower numbers where you lose some quality of your image, but it's a much smaller image. And Motion JPEG basically takes pictures and puts them in motion. So if you took 60 screenshots in a second and put them together into a video, that's pretty much what Motion JPEG is. So it actually works really well, and because it's so compatible, I actually really like this Motion JPEG codec. I usually stick with 95 because it gives me very high image quality, and I'm not too worried about the space it's going to take up because I'm going to further encode these into a more compressed video later on in my editing process. This helps compress things a little bit further, and if you really, really want to have every single color show up in your videos, you can enable this new feature here for the full color range. This is your custom frame size. If you're recording something that is 1080p, but you only want to upload it as a 720p video, you can enable this and downsize it. Something that was missing in PlayClaw 3 that is now available in PlayClaw 5 is this maintain aspect ratio checkbox. This is something that I had requested and I'm happy to see that they implemented it. Basically, say you're using an older monitor uh, with the 1920 by 1200 pixels, like I'm using right now, that's more square shape and than the new 16 by 9 aspect ratio monitors that everyone has. If I was to resize this to 720p without this feature, it would distort my image. It would make things that would be circles look like ovals. But if I enable this, it's going to make sure that the image does not get distorted and it will change the number of pixels accordingly to make sure that everything stays in the proper aspect ratio. Me, as a quality freak, this is very important, and this needed to be a feature, and I'm happy to see that it's finally implemented. Frame rate is very simple. This is how many frames per second that you want to capture. I always go for 30, but I know some people like to go for 60. Compression threads is how many of your CPU threads do you want to use to encode. 
I have a quad core CPU and it has four virtual cores, so it has eight cores in total available. I'm going to stick with two because I don't want to give up my entire CPU to encoding, that way my game itself can keep some of the performance. Cursor is easy, that one's if you want to see the mouse cursor in your recording or not. And this one is going to be, again I'll use a Call of Duty reference, max pre-record buffer size. If you enable pre-record buffering, what it means is instead of recording your gameplay live, uh, you can actually have it kind of holding some of your video in the background. If I enable this with 10 seconds, that means I'm not recording my game to a file, but the computer is holding the last 10 seconds of my game in memory. If at any point in time I hit the record button, it starts recording my game, but it starts 10 seconds in the past. How that's useful for you? Again, Call of Duty reference. If you're going for a video where you get all these really great headshots and stuff, you're not going to want to be recording your entire gameplay and then going back to edit it and find all of those great shots. It'll take you forever. So what you do is you enable something like this, and every time you get that really great kill, you press your record button, and it goes back in time 10 seconds. It grabs that shot that you wanted, and then you can stop recording. And then later on, just import all of your smaller video clips. Converting to stereo is useful. If you're recording something that's in mono, it's going to make sure it brings it out to both speakers. If you're recording something that's in surround sound, it's going to automatically downsample that to two speakers for you. This is really good because when you're doing stuff on YouTube, you're not going to be wanting to mess with surround sound, and you don't want mono. And then mux all audio into one track. I'm using this feature right now, but there's actually no need for it. I'll explain that some more when we get to the audio capture section. And write audio to separate files. Again, I'll explain this some more in the audio section. So we're done with that encoder tab. Now we're moving into the audio sources. When I said there was a lot of programs out there and there was only two that met my expectations, Playclaw 5 was one of the ones that meant that most important thing for me back when I was recording the old way before I bought a mixer and have all this nice hardware that I have. And it was because it lets me add multiple audio sources to record. If I was playing a video game and I wanted to record my video game, I could just add the default Windows sound device. So that makes it very easy to do that. If I want to have my microphone recorded, I just add my microphone in and I can choose from any of the devices I have on my computer. If I had a second microphone, I add my second microphone in and I keep doing that. And what it does is it lets me have a much more dynamic recording. If you want to have a professional video and a great presentation, I'll say this is one time I'll say it and it's very, very important to keep it to heart. Your audio quality is just as important as your video quality. If you have really crappy audio, if you're doing commentary and no one can hear you because the game is too loud, you know, it's going to end up not being very professional and the presentation is going to suck. However, using multiple audio sources like this, you can do this with Fraps or something. They let you have two audio sources. You can choose your game and you can choose a microphone. It doesn't let you have more than two, but two is enough in most cases. But what Playclaw lets you do, and we saw it over here on this previous tab, you can write the audio to separate files. This means you literally get a video file, an audio file for your game, and then an audio file for your microphone, and then any other microphone sources or other sources that you set up. And that means when you get to the editing process, you have individual control over the sound levels of each one of those sources. So if your voice was way too quiet compared to your game recording, you can now lower the volume of the game recording or raise the level of your voice and come up with a really good balance and produce a professional piece of video quality. So that was the most important thing that this thing had that no other recorder really had at the time. I don't use that feature anymore because I have the mixer, but it still makes me happy to see it in here. And for everyone else who doesn't have the hardware, I'm telling you this is very important to producing good quality videos. You can set it to push to talk if you would like, and you can control the volume levels here. So this is obviously a really, really great component of Playclaw 5. We'll move on to screenshots. This is just letting you choose your image format. If you want to have the frame rate and the indication color, and you can do auto screenshots at so many second intervals. Overlays. Oh my goodness. Playclaw 5 is ridiculously overloaded with overlays and that's a good thing because more options is always a good thing. I have pretty much none of the overlays turned on right now other than the frame rate, but you can have 
in your games a frames per second overlay which is popular from fraps a clock so you can know what time it is cpu information showing you the percentage of your cpu load and the temperature same thing for your gpu the load and the temperature you can put an image in there which is great if you want to put a watermark in recording statistics let you know your recording time your file size if you dropped frames all of this is built into your overlays a stopwatch if you want to set yourself a time limit text in case you again you can put something kind of like an overlay of your game channel or something like a watermark a timer if you want to know how long you've recorded and you want to set your alarms TeamSpeak 3 overlay if you're using TeamSpeak 3 I use mumble personally so you can see who's talking and all those things and you can also plug your webcam directly into here so that you can use that as an overlay in your game all of these have a feature to enable it or turn it off and show in the video and screenshots or not. So that means if I have this deselected, I will see that overlay, but in the video that I'm recording, it won't show up. So that makes it really powerful that you can have overlays that you want to see for your information, but not have the video get convoluted with all these overlays for the people watching. However, if you want people to see those overlays because it's something you think that they would enjoy to see, like the frames per second, just ticking that box means it's going to show up in your recording. Setting the appearance and all that, you can do so much with it. If you open it up, you're going to get all these chances to change up the colors and do a lot of things with it. You can uh, do a lot more in the game, which we're going to show you when we get to the game section. Hotkeys, kind of self-explanatory. You get to choose your hotkey setup for these things. You can hide the interfaces. You can open up the in-game menu. You can start stop your recording. You can take a screenshot. All of those hotkeys are built in there, and of course you bind them to whatever keys you would like. Folders, you get to choose where your videos and where your screenshots go, but what I really like about this is it has the add process name option here. So if I start recording a video, I'll go ahead and open up my recording folder for Playclaw. You'll see that this is showing my Windows desktop, this is showing Payday 2, this is showing Poker Night at the Inventory. It goes by the Windows process name and creates a folder for you, that way, when you have a lot of videos, they're already separated into the right game. And that way, it makes it much more organized and easy for you to find them. And of course, if you enable the add date, then you have the dates of everything on there. So you can find things by the time that you recorded them. This makes organization really easy. And therefore, it is really important to have that feature, I think. The general settings, we have a lot of stuff in here. Of course, the interface language. Minimizing is enabled. Start minimize is enabled. Desktop mode, which is what we have on right now. It's telling you about my license information. Profiles is where you can choose any of these options and save it to a profile so you can have multiple profiles configured. That way, if you want to do something different for desktop capture versus video game capture, you can go ahead and save yourself a different profile and not have to change the options all the time. And then we just have the blacklisting. This is an important feature because not all the time do you want Play Claw to hook into a program. You would want to block any of your media players. So like here's my media player, here's VLC, another media player, because I don't want these overlays to pop up when I'm watching a movie or something. So you add it to the blacklist and play claw knows to ignore those programs and not try to record them or show the overlays on them. And then the help just takes you online to their help stuff. The last thing I'll say before we jump into the game section is one of the things that impressed me about play claw five, other than the multiple audio sources and multiple audio files, was the general performance that I got with it. When I was playing Skyrim, I remember that I was getting really bad frame rates. I was playing it on triple monitors and pushing my computer to its limits. When I tried to record that footage using Fraps and some of the other capture programs I had, my frame rate got so bad that the game really wasn't playable anymore. When I tried Playclaw 3 out at the time, I was able to start recording my game and it felt like my frame rate was almost completely unaffected. The performance level of Playclaw 5 is great and the impact on recording was minimal and I think that's important and it had to do with the way that it captures the game. Not so much that it uses less of your CPU and hard drive resources, it's just the way that it captures the game. It doesn't lock down your frame rate and that's really really important. And the last thing I'll tell you before we go into game as well, I have links for you. If you guys need a 64-bit motion JPEG codec in case this doesn't install one for you, you can download one for free here. That way you can import this into 64-bit video editors if you capture. That is here on this download link, and I'll put it up bigger for you. 
Also, if you want to read the entire PlayClaw 5 manual, which explains a lot of these features I just went over in different ways, you can go ahead and go to this link, which I have larger here for you. So with that said, the next part of the review, I'm going to go ahead and stop recording and go start recording again inside of a video game. I'll show you guys these overlays in a little bit more detail. And once we get to explain those overlays, I'll go ahead and conclude the review and give you guys my final thoughts and opinions. Hey everybody, welcome to the second part of the review and welcome to Poker Night at the Inventory 2. But of course what we're here to look at is Play Claw 5 and all of the options we have inside of our game. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up the configuration options in game by holding left control and home, which is my current hotkey. That pulls up a lot of the options that we saw on the desktop recording. We have our encoder settings still. We have the audio sources, the screenshots. But what we really want to show off here is now the overlays. I'm going to show you by starting to show you how you can move around these overlays inside of the game. I have the frames per second overlay enabled right now. It's showing it to me, but not to the recording. So I'm going to go ahead and enable to show it to the recording. And now you guys will see that show up in the actual recording itself. If I go back into overlays and I go to set appearance, you can see how I can move these around. I can change the font family, the size, the weight, the style, the color. I can choose the alignment and if I want to draw a shadow for it. This is really good because depending on the game that you're playing, you might have different things that are really important for you not to be hiding, either a mini map or other useful information. You want to move these overlays to the proper places for your recording so that they're not blocking information for you or for your viewers. So you can do that for every single one of the overlays. If I enable my CPU information, I enable the overlay. I'll say go ahead and show it to the video as well. Now I have all my CPU information showing up. And if I want to go back into the overlays and I want to move that somewhere, I can move this information to wherever I'd like it to be. What we have is a ton of customization here with this. And these overlays being so flexible means that you can again have the most professional recording possible. There was nothing worse than having an, an important overlay that I wanted to have, but then it covered up something I really needed. I remember playing StarCraft II and not being able to see how many resources I had because my overlay was popping up there. Now I don't have to worry about things like that because I can obviously move those overlays. And then again, because I can hide them from the video recording itself, I can put a lot of things like my CPU and GPU information, which might be very useful for me, but not make you have to look at it in the video recording. So this is the end game menu and you can see how useful that would be. And you can choose from most of the options that you have. And then once you get done with what you want to set up, all you gotta do is exit and you're back in the game. Okay, so let's go ahead and try to end off the review by finalizing everything we went over today. I know I do long and drawn out reviews, but that's for your benefit because I like to give you all of the details so you really know what you're getting into and you understand things before you have to figure out on your own. Thus the entire purpose of a review. And I take pride in knowing that I give you a lot of those details. What we covered today with PlayClaw, the most important features to me, was being able to have multiple audio sources and save those to separate audio source files. That it has a really good encoder because Motion JPEG is both flexible and very compatible. That we had really, really great overlay options and the performance impact when I was actually recording was very negligible. Overall, after I've used several programs, every program you can think of with a better name or, or even minor names, nothing compared to PlayClaw 5. Unfortunately, that's something this nice isn't free and there are very few really good free programs out there. If you are looking for a free way to record, the way that I actually do that now is with OBS, Open Broadcasting Software. And that's what I use when I do my live streams and that's a free program, it's community made. And although you don't record really high quality stuff like this quite the same, it's gonna be encoding all of your stuff on the fly. It takes a little bit more CPU power, but you can do local recordings and of course you can use it to live stream. The program that this is most similar to, of course, is gonna be the most popular Fraps. And Fraps also isn't free. It's a $37 fee, and if you get it, I'm pretty sure this is a lifetime license. So it is a one-time purchase of $37. Hopped over to the playclaw.com page and I saw what they have. It looks like they have changed their scheme up since I originally got it. They now have the free trial. So of course, go ahead and try it out for free for yourself if you'd like to try it out. And then you have three different licensing options ranging from cheaper than Fraps, the same price as Fraps, to the more expensive than Fraps. 
And so you can go ahead and check out their page, which is again, playclaw.com to look at all that information and uh, find out more about this product. But what I want to say is, again, it is my favorite recording program. I'm not trying to advertise it because I want to advertise for them. I'm trying to advertise it because it earned its credibility with me. So this entire recording was done with Playclaw, and I'm going to go ahead and edit it all together and get it out for you guys as a review. I hope you enjoyed the review. This was Vicious. If you guys would like to say thank you, give it a thumbs up to say thanks. And I do appreciate any comments you have. If you want to give me some uh, ideas of other software to review, if you want to comment on how the review went for this, if you want to say you have some information about other programs I might have already tested and they've changed and gotten better, anything relevant to the video, go ahead and give me a comment. And I always read those comments and try to reply for them. So that was going to be everything for today, guys. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. And this is Vicious, and I'll see you next time.